So the I-480 corridor is a very busy corridor in the Cleveland area, and the Valley View Bridge is one of the most important pieces of infrastructure in the state. It's a very long bridge, about three quarters of a mile long. It's over 200 feet high. The old decks were in pretty bad shape, and, and we needed to, to do something with those. And unfortunately, because of the ADT approaching 180,000 cars a day, to do some kind of contraflow or, or phase construction was not really a practical option here. So building a new bridge down the middle was the most efficient way of dealing with the traffic on the project and maintaining a, a decent level of service. Well, the Valley View Bridge project has been in the works since the early 1970s. We had a conceptual drawing of a third bridge in the middle. So back then, the engineers had the foresight to kind of anticipate the need for this bridge. And of course, 480 in this segment is the busiest roadway in the state of Ohio. So it's a vital piece of infrastructure for Ohio. So this project involved building the express lanes at the intersection of 480 and 77 to service the public. The existing structure was approaching its end of its service life and needed some drastic repairs. The district had investigated different methods of uh, maintaining traffic and rehabilitating the bridge at the same time. So what was decided was the best value was to do back what the engineers had thought in the 70s was to build that middle bridge, the third lane across. The bridge is a 15 span, it's about 4,150 feet long. Typical span length is about 300 feet, about 200 feet in the air, uh, which certainly uh, uh, poses some challenges for us. It was a steel eye girder bridge, and we were building in between the two existing structures. There's about 90 foot in the middle, which made steel erection one of the challenging things on the project from a conventional standpoint, which is why we chose to use a, a, a gantry crane to erect the steel. Once the new center bridge was completed, it was used to hold traffic so we could redeck the existing structures. The main purpose for the, the new bridge is to carry traffic while we're, we're redecking the existing structures. Along with that, it also provides uh, uh, two additional express lanes in the eastbound and westbound directions, which helps to alleviate congestion at the uh, I-77 system interchange. We knew Walsh was uh, the number one bridge builder in the United States, and we know that we have a pretty good resume of, of designing complex structures as well throughout the United States. We felt that it was a really good partnership to really pursue this project. It was uh, the first time that uh, ODOT had decided to follow what they call a, a PTI, or Proprietary Technical Information Procurement. Uh, and really what that meant was we, we met three times throughout the procurement, and at each of those three meetings, we presented our progressive designs. The process was, was really good. It, it really gave us the confidence, it really gave ODOT and, and Walsh the confidence that what we were coming up with was, was ultimately going to be the right solution. A couple things that really stand out to me, first would be the soil setup, ATC. What we came up with was something that the Office of Geotechnical Engineering hadn't really approved in the past. And we really worked closely with folks like Alex Detloff and Chris Merklin and their team and gave them the confidence that creating a, a concept where we would actually enable the soil surrounding the, the piles to set up and to be able to increase the, the bearing capacity of the piles, that really was a great partnership and that really helped us ultimately win the job. One of the ATCs that we submitted was to change uh, from the existing pier shape, which has very large sides, to a hollow core design. And with that, we were able to eliminate mass concrete. Mass concrete is when there's a large volume of concrete, we worry about cracking, we worry about differential between the outside temperature and the inside temperature, because concrete gets hot as it cures. So that can lead to the concrete cracking, which is detrimental to the strength and the life of the concrete. So by eliminating that mass concrete, we were able to accelerate the bridge construction of the piers by doing a center core formwork and an outside form uh, and moving those up the pier step. One thing about this job that was really nice is there was a lot of repetition. Um, so we were able to uh, work with our designers and design a project that was efficient. Um, we had the same piers, basically, you know, 14 piers. They were all uh, the same shape, the same caps. And with that hollow system, we were able to jump those up 24 foot lifts at a time. It made it a very efficient project for us.
Pier 14 is located on the eastern end of the bridge and it's one of the first foundations that we constructed. And it was gonna be a foundation that was gonna be uh, a spread footing on, on rock. And we took some soil borings in that location um, at the very beginning of the project. And lo and behold, when Walsh started excavating for that foundation to get down to the rock, there was no rock to be seen. So I'm in my office one day and I get a call, you know, hey boss, we're out here digging uh, and there's, there's no rock. And I thought they were joking, you know, it sounds, sounds like a joke. We then did a lot more investigation to find out what was going on in that footing and we found out that the rock was not there, at least how we expected it to be there. It was not a level shelf in that footing and it had some irregularities in it and uh, it was down, I think like almost 30 feet in one place. So a spread footing in that location was, was absolutely out of the question at that point and we had to switch to a pile driven foundation. So we quickly uh, gathered our designers and we quickly redesigned the foundation to be pile supported. Walsh was able to move over to some other foundations and start excavating for those. And ODOT was very patient and very understanding of the situation. And we were able to get Walsh back out there uh, quickly and, and, and get the, the, the piles driven and, and get the foundation poured and, and off we went. Of great particular importance to everybody was maintaining the structural integrity of the existing bridges. When the bridges were erected, there were some induced cracks on the structural steel. I guess the way the steel was shipped and loaded had induced some cracks. So that was a, a big importance to the project, was to kind of monitor the existing steel, inventory what was out there, go through the old inspection reports, know what was cracked already, and keep a very close eye on that as we loaded the bridge with the gantry cranes. Probably the most technically challenging part of this project was the erection of the structural steel. We utilized the three gantry crane arrangements. They spanned about 98 feet. They ran on the existing bridge decks. So typically the girders would come in at uh, one girder in 140 foot length and another 160 foot length. Then we would splice together and then we would dress them depending on the sequence with cross frames, with uh, stiffening truss, whatever the case might be. And then we would rig them up to the three gantries and get ready to move out across the bridge. There was a tremendous effort from our design engineer Jacobs as well as our construction engineer Jansen and Spons analyzing every pick that went out that bridge, analyzing to make sure we weren't causing any additional stress to the existing structures. Overall, there was 205 girders make up this bridge and over 100 picks were moved with the gantries out uh, across the 4,000 foot long structure. So another thing that was on the project that is pretty unique is a gap grading that's between the center bridge and the two outside existing bridges. So the outside of each outside bridge has a normal vandal fence and then between the small three foot gap there's a gap grading that just sits just below the parapet walls. This was not a part of the original plan for the project but was soon adopted with the idea of you know, if there's an accident on one of the bridges, you're able to hop the wall. First responders are able to just hop over from one bridge to the other and easily access, you know, whatever's on that other bridge. So that gap grading is there to protect anyone or anything that might be able to fall through that gap. But it's a much better look for the bridge. You know, those four fences would have been pretty unattractive for the, the public to see while driving every day. And now it looks like you almost can't tell that it's three different bridges when you're driving on the deck. I think one of the key elements to the success of this project was being cohabitated together in the same field office with the Walsh construction team and the designers as well. Anytime there was issues or problems, it was usually a face-to-face -face discussion, right? It was very forthright. We also had the benefit of coming off two mega projects on CCG1 and CCG2 with the Walsh team, which, you know, we both approached this project with mutual respect for each other. And in my opinion, that was the number one determinant on the success of this project. This team, especially of all the projects I've been involved with, was a very cohesive unit. We liked one another, I think, and that made things a little bit easier. But really from day one, partnering was in place on this project. Everyone was invested in this whole team. I think that's one of the things we're most proud of on this job is the way this whole team really worked together and had the best interest of the project in mind. And I think that's a big reason that we were as successful as we were here. You're never sure who's gonna have a great idea all the players on the project have ideas, and if those ideas can be heard 
and everybody's working together as a team, I think you can come up with a lot of good solutions and, and combinations of ideas to get good solutions on the project. And I think that's what you know, partnering really, really is all about. Being able to understand where all parties involved are coming from and um, coming to an end solution together, you know, with a product that everybody's happy with and you know excited about and proud to have been a part of it. There's no replacement for it. If you want to go far, go together. So that's an old cliche, but it, it really means a lot when it comes to partnering. If you show trust and respect to your fellow teammate, you'll get that back in return and everybody will benefit from that.